Okay, welcome back to the Narrowband Channel, folks. Today, I'm going to talk about two major types of noise reduction. So, there are two big categories. One of them is a destructive form of noise reduction, and the other is a non-destructive form of noise reduction. Now, I don't have an OM1 yet, okay? Olympus is claiming a two-stop improvement in ISO performance of that camera. Now, what that means, well, I, I need to have one in my hands to really determine, to me at least, you know, as an astrophotographer, what that really means. But for now, I want to kind of explain the differences between destructive and non-destructive forms of noise reduction. And I'm, I'm doing that with my E1X here. So I did a little test with this guy. But, but first, a little bit of history, okay? So non-destructive forms of noise reduction are basically by using calibration, okay? And these types of noise reduction have been around for a long time, okay? We're talking like the 1960s is when NASA first started experimenting with this, and amateurs started using it in the 90s, okay? And even a few in the late 80s. So this has been around for a while. And by the way, there is not a single camera manufacturer out there that I know of that is using this type of noise reduction, okay? To this day. Now, cell phones actually do. Just kind of one of the reasons why those tiny little sensors actually produce kind of decent looking pictures for what they are. But anyways, calibration frames, what they are is we are basically taking the images with a sensor. Now, a lot of them are done with the lens cap on. Sometimes they're different lanes. Sometimes they're a completely uniform light source on the sensor. And what these different types of calibration frames allow us to do is actually build a mathematical model, okay, or a statistical model that basically predicts how the sensor reacts to certain conditions. And those conditions may be light, or they may be temperature, or it may be charge thrown into the camera via, you know, the ADC unit, or the analog digital converter. You know, it could be a variety of different things, okay? And what this allows us to do is basically predict how a pixel will react. Because let's say we take a picture of either a gray or a white or even a black object, every single picture, pixel is going to see each point differently, even if it's completely uniform, all right? Some of them will be lazy, some of them will be hyper, they'll be more sensitive than the others around them. Uh, some of them will have more intrinsic noise in them from read noise. Uh, some of them will have more thermal noise than others will. And by having built a statistical model through calibration frames, we can actually predict how our sensor works. And then we can apply that to our image from a database and basically create a much sharper, much cleaner looking image, all right? Now, like I said, this has been technology that's been around for a very long time, and yeah, none of the camera manufacturers use it. Now, maybe this tech is in the OM1. I don't know yet. I need to get my hands on one so I can test it myself and find out. But I know this for sure. The E1X that I'm using for this test does not have this tech. Now, the destructive forms of noise reduction, I mean, those are the ones that everybody's used to, you know, the AI type noise algorithms, even the AI ones, the very best ones that are out there are basically smoothing the image there, creating artificial artifacts sometimes in the picture in order to get rid of what our eyes see as, as noise or grain, okay? Now, and, and let me kind of give you an example here. So, non-destructive noise reduction, you know, through calibration frames, if you came to NASA with, you know, let's say I, I claim to have discovered a supernova, okay, which I actually did photograph a supernova once well before it was actually recorded by public databases. Now, in order for me to get my, my you know, claim valid, I need to come forward with my raw files as well as my calibration frames, because NASA is going to want to look at all that and see, see all of that information. Now, if I was to tell NASA, oh yeah, by the way, I use DxO's AI noise reduction on this image. Well, immediately they're going to throw your image out and going to say that, no, we do not accept this information because it's artificial, it's AI intelligence that is not uh, creating an accurate depiction of the sky or whatever we're trying to photograph. So that's kind of why 
destructive noise reduction, you know, that's why I call it destructive noise reduction, is because it's not a completely true uh, destruct or a description of what we're looking at. Now, to do this, uh, I use ASTAP, A-S-T-A-P is how you spell that. It's a piece of software made by a German gentleman, and from that we were able to basically take some daytime images, and I did a little studio setup out here in like in the day in the daylight so we had natural lighting it wasn't like I was under like LED lights or anything like that and from this uh, we're able to basically like stack a bunch of images and and basically calibrate them and it's pretty incredible what I found so here's the scenario this is basically how I set things up but I'm taking the pictures from a tripod with the E1X and I used all the exact same shutter speed for all these different images I just varied the ISO and I changed the aperture and correspondence to basically go to a higher higher ISO. So we started out at ISO 400 and we worked our way all the way up to ISO 6400. And as you can see it's got the typical the typical noise that you would expect at ISO 6400. Let me let it catch up. There we go. You can see it right there. And even at ISO 400 yes there's still a little bit of noise in here which which a lot of people would surprisingly find annoying now let me go to this is ASTAP right here and this is basically the software that I use to do the calibration so here here's a light frame this is the ISO 400 light frame that we loaded in and we just have one picture and then I had a stack of about 50 dark frames now unfortunately the pictures that I took at ISO the highest ISO the temperature right here uh, turned out to be significantly different from the temperature of my light frame. So those dark frames didn't calibrate very well and didn't give me as good a result. However, at the lower ISO, ISO 400, we actually got some very good results. But here's the flat frames, and then of course we also did flat dark frames, which are, you know, stacked and already calibrated right here. And then here in the results tab, you can see I did a couple different renditions of it, but, you know, the first one we had 68 flat darks, 52 flats, uh, 50 dark frames, and then one light frame. That's what the one X at the very end there is. And then down here we had 68 flat darks, 86 flats, and 50 darks, and one light frame for the ISO 400 image. Now, let's click over here to Photoshop. So, this is the ISO 6400 file. All three of these pictures are the same picture. They're, different, they're just treated differently. Okay, so on the left here, we actually have the calibrated image. This is ISO 6400. And if you look at the top of the film advance lever on the OM-1, you can see that there's a lot less noise than there is comparatively over here on the right to just straight out of camera. And I know there's a, there's a lot of better color information that's preserved here as well because, like I said, this is a non-destructive form of editing. I mean, the top of the rewind lever here is red, and then over here, it's, it's actually quite a bit smaller. And on top of that, we completely lost the color in it. Same to look at the film dial. You know, almost all the color in the alternating yellow and white uh, ISO markers here is, is gone, whereas it's still very distinct over here in the calibrated version of the file. Now, there's still a little bit of noise in this, but you know, I'm, I'm going to blame this mainly on the fact that my dark frames were almost 10 degrees different from my light frame. So I didn't do a very good job calibrating that from this standpoint. Now over here on the right here, this is uh, DxO's raw noise converter or engine, whatever you call it. As you can see, it does obliterate basically all the noise. But once again, it introduces a lot of these different artifacts and stuff. And like I said, like this is an artificial form of noise reduction and even the uh, the light strip that's right here is actually a little bit bigger than it actually is in real life over here on the other two cameras. These are the ISO 400 pictures and this is where you really see a telling difference. So you can see here on the, in the middle picture this you can see there's there's quite a bit of noise even at a low ISO of just ISO 400 and yet over here on the left that noise is basically completely gone like look at the top of the film advance lever it's it's very very smooth whereas it's pretty gritty and grainy over here in the middle file and then of course DxO does do a good job of getting rid of all of the noise as well but you know 
think of how much better this would look if we were using a calibrated frame to start with. So because the DXO unfortunately only works with raw files and so we had to use the middle picture here, the one that had the grain in it. So really folks, the ultimate way for camera manufacturers to you know kind of reduce a little bit more noise would be to start off by basically programming the cameras to somehow do calibration frames internally and you know build their own database of like you know and record and, and basically kind of figure out how each individual sensor at each camera works and then from there do your noise reduction that's destructive afterwards all right and, and that would also give you the option to like kind of turn these things on and off so those are kind of some of the initial findings that i had when i was kind of doing this and it was kind of interesting because i kind of discovered a couple of things about olympus raw files and that that olympus actually employs a lot of chroma noise reduction as well as sharpening to their pictures even their raw files uh, the picture all the way over here to the left this is this actually has all of that stripped away so in theory there should you know it should look even better once we were to apply some of those uh, the chroma noise reduction and sharpening that olympus is applying to their raw files all right so there we go that's kind of a little bit of a preview i know this isn't terribly in depth and i'm skipping over a lot of details because i wanted to keep this video short uh you know really this is a topic that we could spend hours talking about all the nitty-gritty scientific details that go into this kind of stuff but yeah i'm really looking forward to getting my om1 and i'll give you kind of a more sure interpretation of what an astrophotographer thinks of the better iso performance in the om1 because it is better than the previous sensors